I'm gonna try and see if I can video how I'm getting on. I'm a long way off where Let me zoom out so I'm a long way off where reproducing what Chris is doing on a consistent basis. And uh, the thing I'm having most trouble with is even though I'm attacking it from that angle, I'm getting a scrape that way as I roll the edge. So I know that something's not quite right, but every now and again I get I get a combination and I reproduce what he's doing. It's a perseverance and that's uh, how we'll sort it. One thing I noticed on a comment, I think was on a video showing um, Richard King, where they've got to print at both ends, and he suggested that instead of just taking it off both ends, take it off one, and obviously the whole thing's going to come up this end, so it would extend the print along, rather than rocking it backwards and forwards, so bit off this, bit off that. So I might try that on this, so I've never done that approach. It's supposed to bring it in a bit quicker. As with most things in life, I tend not to make a judgement until I've at least give it a go. can say, giving Chris's scraping style a go is possibly one of the most frustrating things I've attempted. It's just not as simple as he makes it look. He is due round, so hopefully we'll get a better guidance later on so I'm not going to touch that and I'm going to see what happens down there and because my scraping is not up to the same as Chris's I'm still be buried Pain in the arse with the holes because any uh, chips you drop down it then drop onto the surface plate and it goes crunch as you lower it down. I think I could safely say that that's shifted along quite a bit. Hey, 
seems to know his eggs from his eggs. So we'll do the same again. And we're just going to change the angle of attack so I can hit the camera with my shoulder. Just starting to see a shoe coming through here. So I'll take it off again and uh, bring it back in a few more passes. I'm just going to put a pattern over the, uh, this is the beveled face. And from here to here is gone, it's been rusted through. I can, uh, I've took the rust off with uh, the fine stone. But as with all the other surfaces, there's no discernible texture on it. Uh, with an awful lot of crap. So we'll go over it and uh, get it ready for uh, a rub, as uh, Chris would say, or a print, as everybody else calls it. Now I'll work back that way, but you'll not be able to see a lot. In fact, I'm not even sure I can get in to do it. I'll bring you back when I've done it. Stick you in the other sky hook. Oh, just out of shot on the old uh, surface plate. No. Anyway. Just looking at getting some texture on it so I can do a print. It ain't got to be pretty. It's just got to pick up ink. So printing this thing's uh, not as straightforward because it's you've got bad distribution of the weight the weight's wanting to print this edge heavy um, obviously you can't stick it in the middle of the plate because there to there you'll miss all the back edge so you have to print it down the side now, I've not got a lot of ink down just at the minute because I want to see where we're at Moving it over till it touches. And you can see the balance is all over the shop, so it ain't gonna be easy doing a hinging test on it, so that's not looking that bad. 
So we'll put a proper ink lay down and uh, it doesn't look too far out. Well, I hung it up, dunked it for 10 minutes, let it hang overnight, dunked it again for 10 minutes, been out for a walk for a couple of hours. And I'll give it a couple of uh, light passes. It's not bad. Fades out a bit at that end. And possibly a, a tad here. So all I'm going to do is take the middle out of it again. And uh, see if I can get a better print all down. So that's the straight edge we did the other day. Bit high in the middle. About there. And about there. So it's around about thirds in. I think it's supposed to be fifths. Yeah, we're a little bit high in the middle there. on the end so we'll do a bit more and uh, bring it back so I'm just going along now picking off the blues with a shallow scrape What I'm trying to get are the blue spots with the sil uh, silver centre, which is the silver centre is where the high spot is, and then the blue around it was the ink that's been rubbed off the high spot and deposited around it. And by dropping those down, I make a new flat plane just below them. The only downside is you've got to drop them all down, otherwise you end up with a few very, very high spots in comparison with the others, which where is where the tedium comes in trying to pick them all out. The one thing that's an advantage with, I guess, a biax, and I've never used one, I've got one which I need to have, some, have a go with, is providing you get a consistent result picking out the high spots should be very similar when you're doing it manually like this the more consistent you were with putting down the cross hatch the more consistent you should be generating the high spots and therefore you can get into a better rhythm taking them out 
I can generate waffle like this for quite a long while. So I'll show. been at it about three hours and I've extended the print range from each side we just started to pick up in the middle it's still a bit high on that corner and that corner but uh, yeah, my guess is it's somewhere around about half a thou but I'm not beating the crap out of it just yet Uh, a long way to go, and I'm uh, knackered. I'm slightly heavy inking on the stone, but uh, we've just got to bring this area in so everything, all the blue's got to come off. Uh, we've got two hollows, and that's about how it read when I scanned it over with a DTI on a stand. A couple of big hollows and high at the edges. It's pivoting around about here and there. If you look, you can just see the. Not easy with the light, but it's a little bit darker on the print there and uh, in that area. Yeah. Right, well, I'll just uh, give it another good bashing and uh, real inked the plate. And then I've set up my uh, DTI stand with a tense indicator and this section in the red is around about a th anything up to a thou below the rest which is look, three or four really good heavy scrapes over the whole blue I'm gonna leave that area uh, anyway Chris is on his way down so I might even see if he can show me how he heavy scrapes If we give it a thumping where you've been scraping, right, <coughs> and see what sort of rub you've got then. <coughs> Well, we've, uh, well, I have given it about five or six heavy cuts, and we've still got a hollow. Well, 
but that's still the original surface that I took the rust off. You can see by the length of the stroke, it's uh, I mean, these are what getting over five inches long, leaning on it. So, I don't know what that plate was used for originally, but uh, it definitely had a bloody big hollow there. Anyway, carry on giving it a heavy scrape. Just got to keep remembering that. I have to rotate the plate so that I'm crossing the uh, the cut that I've already done. get up printing's a bit like mini weightlifting not to be attempted in a tight corset in there again so it's still pivoting in these top corners these, these two corners so I suspect there's a couple of bits I've missed So that's there and there. So it's hard on there. Oh, look, we've almost crossed the line. Not there. So I'm just going to take the blue off now and see what it does. I'll bring you back in a bit. Oh, you can't see any of that, can you? So. Pivoting up there and on here, so you can see the bits I've missed. So I'm going to strip off the blue now and uh, see where it sits. I'll bring you back in a bit. I'm going to another have a scrape. This side I've done short curls, but about an inch and a half long and quite tight together, so you get that kind of effect. And then that's more random 
that's the area that we're trying to get down to. Um, unfortunately, I was, I was planning on doing this all the way across. Only by the time I got to there, the edge had gone off the scraper. So I uh, resharpened it and then pissed about down here and everything went to pot. So I had to re re-hone re it again. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how the spotting picks up. I'll bring you back when we've done it. We've got another two hours at it, and uh, I've even forgot how many times I've walloped over it. It's got to be going on for five or six now. Um, we're still a thou and a half low in that area. So I've halved where we were. I'm unable to reproduce Chris's rocking motion without getting hand cramp within a matter of seconds. What I can do is the exaggerated curl. The net result of which is the same kind of, or very similar 
curl pre produced on the surface. So what we end up with is a series of mini arcs um, and then I'll cross back and go over from a different angle to take out the remaining bits of blue. It's certainly producing a smoother surface than the um, more sort of traditional, well that's the wrong word as well, than the conventional method which is covered mostly on YouTube and the likes. Um, is it better? Dunno. Is it easier? It's getting easier the more I've done. Um, I think it's certainly easier for picking off. Um, but I've not got down to a decent uh, points per inch yet. So it'll be interesting to see how that progresses. So this is after a few hours of Chris working on it. He's done the bottom side. That's what he calls roughing it out. That's a uh, cast iron parallel. It's 30 inches long, uh, 2 inches wide. Now he's uh, basically printed it, or rubbed it as he calls it, on the stone, worked off the blues, and then he's checked it with a just a standard mic. It's a uh, Only reading in uh, Thou. Anyway, straight off the mic. Um, now, bearing in mind, I mean, it was pretty good nick, albeit it was the surfaces were rusted. Uh, straight off the mic, he got it to uh, plus or minus, I think it was a tenth and a half from end to end across the width. Um, he's then done a few more rubs and brought that down to a total indicated readout with the indicator sat on the granite stone and sliding the uh, straight edge backwards and forwards under it. We've, uh, I think he's got a total of uh, thou uh, one and a half ten thousandths. So that's, if you like, plus or minus three quarters of a tenth. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And mostly by feel and eye. Um, anyway, so that's what he, he got to that stage and said, right, well, that's roughed out. I'll bring my small scraper to uh, through the week, finish it off, and then the plan is to use that level, that parallel, sat on the straight edge that it's sitting on now, and then bring that straight edge in uh, using a um, spirit level, machinist level. Um, so yeah, just I mean those are about inch diameter so it done that and then <laughs> I printed my plate again and I was beginning to feel quite accomplished and uh, yeah looked at the details of his on the DTI and then printed my ploughed field and, and felt very humbled again so uh, I've got to go back over this now and, and I've now got it printing all over and uh, basically start intensifying it and reducing the uh, gaps between the blues. Yeah. yeah, it's been educational. I've just done a print, um, well, a few minutes ago because I just scraped all that section. Um, the middle area in the red. It's printing, but it's uh, very widely spaced. Um, when I was walloping it down, I've obviously leaned a bit harder in that area. So what I'm, I'm, I'm picking off the blue aggressively, but I know that in that section, when I take the blue off, I've got to be much lighter on my depth to scrape. And I've just sat and watched uh, Rob Renzetti's uh, video where he resurfaces or reconditions the uh, a machinist level for Tom Lipton and uses the half moon style of uh, flaking I guess you call it or scraping and flaking
which is the only other video I've seen online of it. He is considerably better than I am. And uh, I'd like to see him do another one um, where he actually scrapes and then goes down to flaking. But he's starting on a, uh, I think it's a 15 inch straight edge that he's ground. So it's already within plus or minus half a tenth. So he's not got to make any um, adjustments, which he openly says. So all he's doing is effectively breaking up the surface for uh, to use as a, as, a, as a bearing for print. Interesting to see though, the scraper he uses has got a very similar uh, shape of handle on the end. It's much more domed at this end and tapered. I couldn't see on it on the picture on the video whether he was actually holding it in the same manner that Chris is, which is like that and then rocking it. You can certainly see the end of the scraper rocking and also moving in a circle. Um, much more pronounced than what I've seen Chris do. So it'd be interesting to see a bit more on that, but I shall have to have a look through his other videos. Um, and I have to say, I've pretty much dug a hole in the end of my palm with the end of this uh, fire handle. Um, so. When I can dig my wood turning lay that, I shall make myself some new handles with a broader top. But I'm getting to a stage where I think I can confidently produce <laughs> the right shape of scrape and on quite a few occasions exactly where I want to put it. <laughs> Bit more work required on the uh, repeatability of the access. Getting it in exactly the right point to nip off the uh, the high spot is where the skill comes in. But as with most things in life, the more you do, the better you get. And on his uh, scraper, I mean, he's producing, I don't know, quarter of an inch from tip to tip on his arc. But his uh, tip of the blade doesn't look half inch wide. It's probably three eighths or something like that. Uh, very, very thin. Much more refined for uh, finishing. Whereas I'm on what I would only describe as a blunt instrument. Interesting to note that um, from what I could see, Robin Renzetti's he's, he's right-handed, he's holding the scraper in the same orientation as me, but he produces his curl that way round. So he works from left to right, um, and the idea being that if you draw a curve that way, you, the next curve trims its feet off. Well, I'm working my so that that would be my way around, but he's working the other way around. I seem to think Chris is doing it the other way around as well. Which would suggest that I've got it wrong, apart from the fact Chris is left-handed. And then throws me googly and does it with his right hand as well, leading. I don't think it matters. Yeah, when he's uh, Robin Ranzetti's got his uh, fancy electronic uh, measuring gauge. And he's measuring the surface is finished and I think it's total indicated readouts a third of a tenth or something um, which you know when you think that the depth that's the, the depth of his scrape is if you went over it three times you get a ten thousandth of an inch deep 
Scary. But it's not that dissimilar to where Chris is at with his last rough scrape. Another thing a note off uh, Robin's video was he uses a precision ground flat stone which he produces himself on his surface grinder with a diamond wheel. Uh, the advantage being that stone only cuts the very highest points off, doesn't dig in, doesn't score. Yeah, whereas mine's a bit. Uh, I think crude would be the uh, nearest explanation, description. Right, I'll flip it round and do that half of the stone and then go over the middle. I'll bring you back when we're ready to progress. Well, it's taken an age to get this to uh, give me an even print. It's better each cycle, but uh, I want to get a video uploaded. And I wanted to show this finished, but uh, that ain't going to happen. Uh, I've got too much else on this week. Um, long and the short of it is... Um, I'm quite happy that I can achieve a, a, a an ever-decreasing curl. Um, I mean, as an example, these are sort of a quarter of an inch tip to tip. But you can see, I mean, there's no point in me developing that area until I got rid of that blank stripe and the same over here but just got to keep working down the blues and it'll get there but it is going to be uh, boring as hell video in it so I'm not going to bother um, I'll finish this off in my own time and uh, hopefully the next video we'll see some progress with Chris scraping the uh, straight edge There should be some links below in the description which will give you some links to the stuff I've been watching on YouTube which you may or may not find interesting.